الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be talking about the Islam of Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه this is where we reached Umar ibn Khattab he is Umar ibn Khattab ibn Nufayl that's his يعني name Al-Qurashi his tribe is Al-Adawi he's from the people of and I don't know, that's his tribe, that's the people he is from. His kunya is Abu Hafs. Some people say that his kunya Abu Hafs comes from his daughter Hafsa, which is incorrect. There are some scholars who say that. But Abu Hafs here doesn't mean Hafsa, radiallahu ta'ala anha, for two reasons. Number one, it would have said Abu Hafsa, but he says Abu Hafs. Two, Arabs, generally speaking, they never name themselves after daughters, generally speaking. They always name themselves after sons. Generally speaking, that doesn't mean you can't name yourself after your daughter, but it's just what the culture was at that time, because it was a, a an environment and an ala in a land where people had to survive, and wars would happen, tribal problems. So a boy was important, and you needed to tell other people, "I have sons," and the way to do that was to have that kunya. He was Amir al-Mu'minina. He becomes the second leader after the Prophet Ali and the two, and the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr, and then Umar radiallahu ta'ala, anu. And the difference between Abu Bakr and Umar is that Abu Bakr, from the beginning, he embraced Islam and he was very gentle with the Muslims. Whereas Umar radiallahu anhu, he showed a lot of animosity and hate and even tortured and hurt the Muslims at the beginning. Um, one of the things that Umar is known for, as a Suhaili says in his Kitab al the Wulf, he said, وَكَانَ رَجُلًا بَعْرُوثًا بِحِدَّةِ الطَّبْعِ وَقُوَّةِ الشَّكِيمَةِ Umar was very well known for, very having, for having a very hard personality. He was a very strict, extremely strict person. At the beginning, his hate for Islam was excessive. He was very against Islam, the idea of Islam. And the reason why he was is because he saw from his perspective that it was dividing the community. It was causing furqa and khilaf amongst the community. A father would not embrace Islam, whereas the son would embrace Islam. And this for him was like, why is Muhammad وسلم, doing this to the uh, Quraysh? Why is he allowing Quraysh to be divided in this manner. So his hate for Islam was very, very excessive. Lidhalika, the Muslims at that time that were following the Prophet ﷺ never expected Umar to embrace Islam. He was on the list of those they never expected him to embrace Islam. But as we're going to see later, some of them even proclaimed and said, the Himar of Khattab, Ibn Khattab, Umar, will take Islam before he takes Islam. And he, Umar is not going to embrace uh, Islam, which is a lesson we take from here. Which is, we never know who is going to embrace Islam. We don't know who is going to take the message of an Islam. And the hidayah to be yadi man, be subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Talib who was helping the Prophet, aiding the Prophet, supporting the Prophet, did not take Islam. And Umar radiallahu anhu was shown animosity or hostility to the Muslims. They were playing a role in persecuting the Muslims and embraced Islam. So a Muslim all the time has to remember that al-hidayah, guidance, and a tawfiq was sadat is the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah said to the Prophet, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Muhammad, you can't guide who you want, but Allah guides who he will subhanahu wa ta'ala. And never to give up. As a Muslim, as long as a person is alive and they exist on this earth, they are still alive, there's hope. As long as they're breathing, there's hope. And don't give up on them. Ask Allah wa ta'ala to guide them. When you then get the concept of guidance, brother, guidance is so important in Islam, that only asking Allah for it. That our Prophet والسلام, as you know, instructed us that every single salah that we pray, we have to recite which surah? Surah al-Fatiha. 
And in Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we ask Allah wa Taala at least 17 times a day? What do we ask? Ahdina Salat al mustaqim We say, oh Allah, guide us on the what? Straight path. Which from the get-go, what we're being taught here is not to be arrogant and teach yourself, Alhamdulillah, I'm guided. I'm saved, Alhamdulillah. It's to always want guidance for yourself. That's why even the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, our Prophet, Aisha Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Anha and Ummu Salama, Hadith Suha, has come that the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, whenever he would pray Qiyab al which was every night, before he would start anything, before he would recite any surah, before anything, he would open his Qiyam al with what? He would say, Allahumma Fatir al Samawati wal Ard. Ali man ghaybi wa shahada. Anta tahkum bayna ibadika fi ba kanan fi yaktarifun. Ihidini. Limakhturifa fi bin al haqi bi idnik. Inna kadadi ban tashawi la salatu mustaqib au kama qala alayhi salatu salam. He would beg Allah to guide him in the matters that diff people differed on. Ihidini. Limakhturifa fi bin al haqi bi idnik. The disagreement, the differences that people have, oh Allah guide me to that which is uh, right. And it sells. Some people have this concept that I'm from the same group. Allah has selected and chosen me. I have nothing to worry about. This is from the Tilbisat of Iblis. It's the deceptions of Shaytan. But in that case, the Imam Ibn Jawzi, Rahimahullah, Ibn Jawzi, he has a kitab called The Deceptions of Iblis. Shaytan is translated in English, right? In there, he mentions that the Shaytan even. He, the deception he does to the people of Hadith. So, the Shaytan fools the people of Hadith. And the things that he said that he fools them with is that there's a science that they use called the Jalhu wa Ta'deel, where they critique the narrators and they praise their narrators, which is something praiseworthy in our religion. Hence, why do the Hadiths are protected? But he said, even then, when it's something good, Shaytan would always want to have a, uh, something to do in it in order to cause problems. So what will he do? He will make the person unjustly speak about other people and also uh, think he's on the haq and the truth from the deception of shaitan. So everything shaitan is an enemy. He doesn't care. He wants to use it to get you to the hellfire. That's what he wants to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided Umar to Islam and inshallah ta'ala this is how it happened and this is something we all should do if we have family members who have fallen off if we have people we love that are close to us maybe our wife our children make dua for them when I with my two eyes I saw children I thought to myself this kid is guided and him And I saw him, Allah Akbar, Allah guided him. How wrong was I to think that? And then guess what happened? I tried to look for what is it that made him guided. And guess what I found out? And, and I believe this is it. It was the dua that his parents were making for you do late. In the night, the begging that they made. And Umar radiallahu anhu's Islam was based on that supplication. And Imam Ahmad narrated in his Muslim that Ibn Hibban in his Sahih bi Sanadin Hassan that Abdullah ibn Umar he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet he said, Allahumma a'izz al Islam bi ahabbi hadayl al rajulayn ilayk. O Allah, honor Islam. Through these two men, whichever of them is most beloved to you, bi abi jahli bi hishabin. Or Umar ibn al Sattabi, Abu Jahl, or Umar ibn al Khattab. Fakan ahabbahuma ilayhi Umar ibn al Sattab. The one that was most beloved to them. Which, which one was it? Umar radiallahu anhu. Abu Jahl never embraced Islam. He died in the Battle of Badr as a disbeliever. Ibn Sa'd in his Tabaqat he narrated, be said in Mursan ila Sa'id ibn al Busayyab. That he said, Can in the new Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ida Ra'a Umar ibn Khattab, the Prophet, whenever he would see Umar ibn Khattab, O Aba Jahlil, or whenever he saw Abu Jahl, he would say, whenever he saw them, 
Again, you have to understand, subhanAllah, both of these men at that time were causing the Muslims problems. Khasat Abu Jahl, even more. And Umar also, we're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, in some of the narrations, how he was, how tough and harsh he was. But whenever the Prophet would see, because the hadith says, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ إِذَا رَعَاهُ And the word كَانَ shows that it's تِغْرَارُ وَالْمُدَاوَةً Whenever he saw him, Abu Jahl and Umar al Sattab, he would make dua for both of them. And he would say, Allah, Oh Allah, strengthen your religion, whichever of those two, these two men is most beloved to you. Hakim also narrated in his Mustadarak, he said in Sahih, and Aisha said, Allah, Ta'ala, and Aqala, she said, Qala Rasulullah, he said, Allah, Ali, he said, the messenger, he said, Allah, Umma, Aizza, Islam, be Umar, Abn al Khattab, be Umar, Abn al Khattab, Khasatan. Which is another narration, which is authentic. And even though the Prophet made dua for both of them, he specifically selected Umar even more. And he said, Oh Allah, honor Islam with Umar specifically. And Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah, and Al Mughlatai, and others, they mentioned that he used to make the dua of Umar more than he would make for Abu Jahl. And this was the reason why he embraced Islam and his heart opened for it. That's why Muslims, we should not belittle the concept of a dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَاتْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلِيُمِنُ بِي لَعَلَهُ يَفْرُدُونِ In another ayah, Allah says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ سَيَذْقُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَافِرِينَ This ayah, the second ayah that I recited, was the ayah that Umar رضي الله عنه based on it, he used to say, لَا أَحْبِنُ I do not carry with me حَمَّ الْإِجَابَ I do not carry on my shoulders the stress of whether my dua will be accepted or not. What I carry on my shoulders, what I keep thinking about and I'm always thoughtful and stressed about is whether I made the dua. Because I know if I make the dua, the acceptance will come. Because Allah says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? Ask me and I will what? I would give you. So all that is upon you is to ask, you get it. You have to ask and Allah will give it to you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But everything, or everybody who was not once a Muslim, before he embraces Islam, there are moments which the scholars call Bidayat Rilid. The time where the person becomes soft and they feel a bit at a vulnerable state. So we want to start from there. Of Umar radiallahu anhu, because Umar was very harsh and tough. How did he become soft? And this is another point Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah in his kitab by the Dariq, in his kitab Iratati Lafat, Ti Masayid al Shaytan, he talks about that he says there's a strong connection between the heart being soft and the acceptance of good and khair. The heart does not work if it has qaswa. And then he preaches the ayah ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَيَّ بِبَيَّ كَنْ حِجَارَةِ أَوَ شَدْ الْقَصْوَةِ When the heart is, has, is hard and it's like a rock, the acceptance of the truth will not happen. In another ayah, Allah says, أَنَوْ يَعْدِ لِلَّذِينَ عَمَلُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُ لِنِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَّلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُنُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ the rain when it comes down, which is the revelation, when it hits the heart and it softens it, etc. So, a person's heart to accept the message of truth has to be soft. So, remember, there must have been a point where he became soft and easy. As we mentioned before, Umar al-Muslimin. It was very harsh when it came to the affairs of the Muslims. When he died the Muslims, they gave up on him. But when Allah wanted to guide him, there's no one who can stop it. And no one can get in the way. And Imam Ahmed narrated in his book, Fada'ilu al-Sahaba, the kitab, Fada'ilu al-Sahaba, the best tahqiq for it, Shaykh Masimah Abbas is tahqiq of it. And then Hakim narrated in his Mustadrak, Bisanad al-Hasad, that Ubu Abdillahi Layla binti Abi Hathabata, listen to this story, she was the wife of Amir ibn Rabi'an. 
She was what? The wife of uh, Amir ibn Rabi'a, a noble companion. She mentions a story, it's an authentic story. Qalat, she said, Inna We are going to go to the land of Habasha, Abyssinia. This was the time the Sahabas were going to do the first hijrah to Abyssinia. So she said, we, were, we, were, we pack it up, we're getting ready to leave. Her husband, her husband, Amr ibn Rabi'a, he went to get some stuff for them. They're traveling, they're going to go. So he went to the market to get some little stuff for them. As he was away, Umar came. He stood in front of this righteous female companion, Abu Abdullah He stood in front of her. وَهُوَ Umar at this time was a Muslim. قَالَتْ she said وَكُنَّا نَلْقَى مِنْهُ الْبَلَاءِ That time, the thing that we used to endure from Umar was very hard. Please harm us. He was very harsh in his words towards us. That's what we knew him to be. But this time he came to me, she said, Umar stood in front of her and he said to her, إِنَّ أُولِنْ قِلَاقُ يَوْلِ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ he said, you are leaving now, huh? It's your time for departure. She said, yes, sir, I'm leaving. Wallahi, we're going to She said, fi ardi nahi. Wallahi, we're going to go out to the land of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. We're going to leave this land, we're going to go to the lands of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, which is fast. Why? they tumuna, you, Umar, have helped us, and all your other cunnings. And you've imposed and forced us into things. Until Allah has now given us an opening where we can go to Abyssinia. Then Umar he said, Sahibatullah. May Allah accompany you guys. She looked at Umar again and she said, Wow. That wasn't what she was expecting to hear from Umar. She was, here, she was expecting hard words and things that were not pleasant. The Umar left. When her husband came back, Abu Abdullah, at that time she said, well, his eyes and his body language and everything I saw that he became soft. But he left. But he saddened him, she said. When he saw that we're leaving, us packing our bags and leaving. Then her husband, Amir ibn Rabi'ah, came. She said to him, Ya Aba Abdullah, this is she took it to her husband. No right, Umar, if only you just saw Umar a few minutes ago, the way he was, and his body language, and when I spoke to him, what he said to me. Then he said to her, Are you hoping for Umar to embrace Islam? She said, Yes. I'm hoping that Umar will embrace Islam. I want him to embrace Islam. He said to her, لا يسلم الذي رأيت حتى يسلم حمار وحباب Umar is not going to embrace Islam until the donkey of his father embraces Islam he's not going to even embrace Islam قالت she that said قال عابن ذلك يكسر لما كان يرى من رضته وقسوته على الإسلام والمسلمين he already said that because of the harshness that he saw from Umar and the way that he was. Before Umar embraced Islam, his sister Fatima bint al-Khattab took Islam before him. She took Islam and her husband. Does anyone know who her husband was? Basrik. Yeah? Sa'id bin Zayd. So Sa'id bin Zayd is who? He's a what? One of the ten from his general. What else is he? There's significant other than that. Yeah? He's Umar's cousin, but who else? Said ibn Zayd. He has another significance. His father is Zayd ibn Amr ibn Mufayl. Zayd ibn Amr ibn Mufayl is his father. His father is for the Al-Hanafiyyud, those people who died upon Tawheed, قبل Islam. Warakat ibn Nawfal, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Mufayl. Are we all together? So his father, Zayd ibn Sa'id ibn Zayd, 
his father was, we spoke about him, right? The beginning of the seerah. We spoke, we mentioned his biography, who he was, and there were some people in Jazeera al Arab who were Muslims before Nabi Muhammad came. They were part of Tawheed. Qis ibn Sa'ida, Al Iyadi, and Waraqat ibn Nawfan, Sa'id ibn Zaydin. A few of them were part of Tawheed, right? Sa'id ibn Zayd's father, Zayd ibn Abd ibn Mufayn, he went to what? Sham, and he embraced Christianity like in its, in its correct form. And then he didn't like it after that. So, we mentioned his story. So they were cousins. How were they cousins? Khattab and Zayd are what? Khattab and Zayd are what? Brothers. Khattab ibn Mufayn and Zayd ibn Zayd ibn Mufayn, they're brothers. So, they both embraced Islam. They both what? They both embraced Islam. Fatima, the sister of Umar Khattab, and Zayd ibn Zayd, both of them embraced Islam. And they were both hiding their Islam from Umar ibn Khattab. They had a Quran teacher that used to teach them the Quran. His name was Khabbab ibn Arat. He was their Quran teacher. And he was from the Qudabai Muslimin. He was from the early Muslims who embraced Islam. He used to come to Fatima and Sa'id ibn Zayd's house. And he used to teach them the Quran and he would recite the Quran for them. That is what Ibn Kathir mentioned in his Kitab al Bidayah al Nihaya, the Suhaili in his Arul and Huluf. And also Ibn Hishab in his Sirah. So this is a point that you have to understand. When Umar had a conversation just right now, we did have a conversation with we talked about. Allah Abdullah, the wife of who? Ali bin Rabi'an. So Umar went home. When he went home, he started to fit the whole night. Regarding Umar Abdullah ibn Abi Hathbata, what happened? What happened? What her story is, and her husband, Abd ibn Rabi'ah, and the fact that they're trying to leave, and how this place, what time, all Quraysh was united, we were all together, and how Nabi Muhammad has now caused division and disunity. And the whole night he was playing with this idea, Umar, until he became, uh, the anger, rage one, became very angry. Uh, and he made a decision that he is going to kill the Prophet Ali He said in the morning, this is going to come to an end. This nonsense that keeps happening here, no, we're going to tolerate it anymore. I'm going to bring this all to an end. Uh, what happened is the problem, and I'm going to bring it an end to him. So he went out, he covered his face, he took his sword out, uh, first he put his sword in, tucked it in, covered it properly, put it under his uh, garment. All he was out there for was to, to kill the Prophet ﷺ. He asked about the Prophet ﷺ, he said, where would he possibly be? And he was informed that the Prophet ﷺ was in Fi Bayt Ridda Safa. Some of the narrations mentioned, he would, they said to him, it was Dar Al-Qab ibn Al-Qab. And at that time, as you know, a lot of the companions are already leaving to uh, Habasha. So there's not many of the Prophet's companions around. So he thought, okay, this is the best time. But there were 40 people with the Prophet at that time. And the Prophet was teaching them, alayhi salatu wasalam. From the people that were there was Abu Bakr, Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala alu, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Habza, radiyallahu ta'ala alu, Ajba'in. So there were very courageous, brave people sitting there, like Habza, like Ali ibn Abi Talib, like Abu Bakr. They wouldn't let Umar just come in and do what he wants. These companions didn't want to go to Abyssinia because they didn't need to, to be honest. Habza didn't have to go to Abyssinia. Ali ibn Abi Talib didn't have to go to Abyssinia without Abu Bakr. Because they had families here at Yali tribe benefits. They won't easily be harmed. So Umar here is puffed up, angry, who wants to who he sees his blood, he wants to go to the Prophet and kill him and bring an end to this whole issue. As he's walking, 
he sees a man by the name of Mu'ayb ibn Abdullah ibn Nahaf al-Adawi, who is a relative of Umar ibn Sattab radiallahu ta'ala, who was hiding his Islam. So Umar doesn't know he's a Muslim. But when he saw Umar's body language and the way he was walking and the way he was, he was, he knew some, Umar was up to something. So he wanted to know. So he came up to him and he said to him, Aina turidu ya Umar. Umar, where do you want? What do you want? He said, Uridu hada, Uridu Muhammad. I need Nabilai Muhammad. Hada sabi. Al nadi farqwa ka abra Quraysh wa saffa ala hanabaha wa abadidaha wa sabba aliha talad. All I want is Nabila ibn Muhammad. The one who deviated from the religion of his people. He divided Quraysh. He has insulted their intelligence, their, their aqan and their thinking. So he, he has belittled the intellect of Quraysh, ridiculed them. He has insulted their religion. He has insulted their idols and their gods. All I want is, I want to kill him. Nu'ayn then said to him, he knows Omar. He knows how st stuck to his opinions he is. He knows he can't move him away. So he has to mention something big to get Omar to, to divert from his decision. فَقَالَ لَهُ نُعَيْنُ سَتِهِ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ غَرَّكَ تَرَكَ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ غَرَّكَ وَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ غَرَّكَ نَفْسُكَ By Allah, your nafs has fooled you. Ya Umar. أَتَرَى بَلِي عَرْضِ مَنَامِ Do you see the people that the Prophet is forming? And also بَلِي زُبْلَى I'm going to leave you to walk on this earth. If you dare to touch Muhammad, do you think you can just walk in and walk around in Mecca like nothing happened? That's one point. He put fear in Umar in that regard. That's one. Two. Second thing is, why would you want to go to the Prophet directly? Why don't you deal with your internal family issues first? Hey. What is it that we might internal family issues? Your sister Fatima is a Muslim. At this time, he didn't know that. He didn't know Fatima was a Muslim and her husband. Was to her and her husband, Sa'id ibn Zayd, is also a Muslim. They embraced Islam. And they followed the religion of the Prophet والسلام, And they have left the religion that you are upon. So whatever you said about Nabi Lai Muhammad, that he insulted our religion and he insulted our internet, and he belittled everything your sister applies on her and her husband. So, whatever you want to do to Nabi Lai Muhammad, why don't you think about doing it to your sister, basically? Faraja Umar radiallahu a'amid and ila ukhtihi wa zawjiha. Umar said, okay, that's good. Thank you. Now, he doesn't know this man is talking to him as a Muslim himself. If he did, he would have said, you're defending Muhammad, you don't want me to go there, and he wouldn't. But he doesn't know he's a Muslim. So he diverts and he goes back to who? Uh, he goes to his sister. At that time in the house, there's his sister Fatima, her husband Sayyid ibn Zayd, and Khabab ibn Arat, who was teaching the Quran at that time. There was a little sahifa, a little a scroll that they had, and on it was Surah to Ta'ah. He was teaching them Surah to Taha. And he kept coming to them every time to teach them Quran and he would leave and he would teach them the Quran. This was something that the Prophet, by the way, used to do. Anyone who had free time, who was, had the memory and the ability to memorize, the Prophet would select those people and he would teach them the Quran and they would go and they would teach the other people. Like as we know, Salib, Mawla Fudayfa, and we all together. And Khabab ibn Arat and other companions, they would go and memorize the Quran and they would go and they would teach. They would go and teach it. It's a very sad, but when certain people reach a level of seeking knowledge and they become teachers and they become ulama and mashayikh, this issue of teaching the Quran it doesn't happen. It's not a Quran teacher anymore. So, so you might not, the alim may not teach the Qur'an, he pass it on to his students or somebody else. And the Prophet والسلام, all his life was what? All his life he taught the Qur'an. Are we all together? 
ولذلك الشيخ عبد الكريم الفضير he spoke about this issue this problem why we don't find he said that the ulama not sit down to teach the Quran and let the halaqat of the Quran be taught by anybody so it's very important so Khabab ibn al-Arat was teaching them surah to Taha كان رسول الله يجمع الرجل والرجلين إذا أسلم عند الرجل الذي في يد في يده سعة يكون بعض الش بعض السبيهان من طعامه وقد ضب إلى زوجه أخت عمر الرجلين ممن أسلم حدوه بخباب فلما سمع حس عمر. So what happened was عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه he came and he made his way towards the house of his sister Fatima. As soon as he came to the door. They could hear certain things that somebody was coming. Those houses were not the way that the houses are today. So if somebody's riding a riding beast, you can hear the sniffing and the moon. You can hear that, that's one. And secondly, you can hear somebody walking towards you. So, and Robert again was a very strong man, so he knocked at the door with full force. And when they heard and they looked, his sister went and she looked at the door. Um, she said it's ugly. And at that time, when, she, when you look down and somebody's standing and you look down at the door, you can see the sword. So she saw the sword that he was carrying. So she said, today he's coming with something. We are going to be in big trouble. So the person who is least fortunate here is Khabab ibn al-Arat. And Khabab ibn al-Arat is not from a big tribe. He can get it bad. Now, he's the one who was poisoned in the family. He's going to be seen as a problem. So what he did was he just hid behind the door. And what Fatima did is she hid the paper that the Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baha was written on it. Ka'ari, she put it there, she hid it. Some of the riwayat she mentions, Ya'ari wada'at mutahta fakhidiha, she placed it on her thigh. Umar radiallahu anhu, he already heard recitation at the door. He could hear what they were reading. So it wasn't like he didn't know that there was recitation, recitation going on. As soon as he entered the door and they opened the door for him, he said, Ma hadihi and hey nabatam. What is this like noise that I'm hearing? That I'm hearing from all of you guys. This is not something we used to talk about. This was not words that we knew. So something new. What is it that you guys are doing? And then he said, Maybe you guys have embraced the religion of Muhammad and you diverted or deviated, sorry, from the religion of your forefathers. So then Sayyid ibn Zaydin stood up and then he said to Umar he said, Ya Umar, Ara'ayta bi kaab al-haqr fi ghayni deenik. He said, Umar, have you ever thought of if the truth was present in other than the religion of your forefathers? Umar did not want to hear anything after that. He knows where he's going with this. So all he did is he hit him severely until he bled and he fell on the floor. Fatima stood up and she ran at Umar and she pushed him away from her husband. Umar then beat her up severely until she bled as well. Then when Umar saw the blood come out of his sister's face and her husband, Fatima responded and she said to him, Yes, we did embrace Islam. Uh, like it or not, Umar, we embraced Islam. We believe in Allah and His Messenger. Whatever you want to do, do to us. It's up to you. But well, we took Islam. Umar, the blood and the way that his sister was talking and her lip and everything, when he saw that, he said, Nadi ba'ala He became very sad what he did. And he held himself back. Then he said to her, give me this paper. Because when she moved to the position, he saw the paper. He said, show me the paper that was there. The sahifa, the scroll that was there. I want to read this uh, scroll. I want to see what Muhammad is teaching guys. Umar is known to have, before this, he was a reader. But that was not common in Quraysh. Not everybody in Quraysh was a reader. So Umar was a reader. So he could read. So he asked if he could read. His sister said to him, 
no, we, we don't want you to take it. We fear that you might do something. He said, don't be scared. Of course, Muhammad is not a Muslim at this time, so he swore by the idols. He said, I'm just going to read it. I promise to give it back to you. Then she was, his sister felt, okay, there's now communication going on. He's not adding it. Then she said to him, Ya akhin, inna ka najisun ala shirkij. You're a disbeliever and you're not in a state of purity. And no one touches this unless he's in a state of purity. Go and shower and come back. I'll give it to you after that. So he went, the narration mentions, he showered and he cleaned himself. And then he recited the ayah for the verses, Baha, ma anzalna alaykum qur'ana li tashqa illa tazkirata li man yaksha tanzeela min man khalaq al-arda wa samawati al-ula ar-rahmanu ala arshi istawa when he read those verses that he reached the ayah ibn li ala Allah la ilaha illa ala fa'budini wa aqil salata li dikri inna sa'ata atiyatun akadu utfiha li tujza and when he recited all of that it had affected Umar radhi Allah and was hot he then said to her, which is a very important point, to this, at, to, at this moment, Umar was fighting something he didn't even know. He didn't know about Islam. He hasn't even read the Quran before. For the first time he's seeing it. And a lot of people were fighting Islam like us. Huh? They call us Muslims. Sir, huh? you Muslims. So you ask, what do you know about Islam? He'll say to you, Arif, you guys are trying to bring Sharia law here. So what do you mean Sharia law? Uh, I'm talking about the UK. Trying to, you're trying to bring the Sharia law here. So you said, what was the Sharia law? And then he will say to you, nonsense things that you think. Whoa. His understanding of Sharia law is, you're going to bring chicken curry to the UK. Or, and it is that you feel like, what is the coronation? So really, when you look at them, they don't have any understanding of Islam. When I was in the UK, I studied at the University of Berkwick University. I studied linguistics. So I'd sometimes go to Soas University for Salah, because there's some brothers there. And Soas is orientalist out there. So some of the classes, you can sit there. You can sit in a... Do you... Do you, do you, do you how do you know Soas? Is that it? Does anyone else know Soas? Is there like a university like source in America? Orientalist made to teach about Islam. And there's a guy there, he teaches Arabic and he teaches Islamic theology. 30 years he's been teaching it. He speaks Arabic very frequently. He lived in Jordan and he studied the language very well. So he's talking about very technical issues like Bukhari and the chain and the first book to be written in Islamic hadith books is al Wattah, Malik and all of that. He's talking about it. But guess what? I asked him, when you talk about these subjects like science of hadith and all of that, well, have you, have you looked at other books? No. He did, he's never heard of Baykuliya. He, the most of, beginner book of the Stalin Hadith. He's never heard of Rufa to Fikr. Ikhtisar Ibn Ubul Hadith. Muqaddimi Fusul Muqaddima of Ibn Salah. All the Qutubs, the Yatafarra Amir, all the Nukat and the Nadm of Iraqi, all of those. He doesn't know. Our relatives never say to you, I know. They won't pretend to know. They will say, I never heard that fascinating. Can you give me a copy, please? But it's gharib. How do you talk about it? And in Wattba and Imam Malik had the riwayat of the Wattba and all of that, but he still do the most basic, at least go from the bottom to the top and then try to destroy it from it. So they don't know Islam, honestly speaking. If a Muslim spends a few years of his life to study the deed of Islam, we'll see it's shocking. So there was a six month Arabic class that was being taught in the Soas University. Uh, it was free of charge. And you could come and you could study free. So I thought, okay, might as well go. Certificate. Take it. Wallahi, wala alfiyat ibn Balik, wala awdah ibn Basalik, wala, and none of those books of Nahu, wala sarf, they've never heard of it. So the Muslim has to understand that when you are talking about Islam, they know not what they, they've just 
read shubuhat from here and there, and they put that into so many pages and they make shubuhat even bigger than it actually is. So Muslims should really study the deed. And then you can see Umar radiallahu anhu, who lives in Mecca, who knows the Prophet's language, understands what language he's talking on, he doesn't even know the Quran. And how many years is he fighting Islam? Oh, yeah, so many years. Are we all together? Jumayr ibn Mut'ib. We mentioned when he had Surah Al-Taha, a Surah Al-Tur, sah? Abu Khulikhu bin Ghayri Shayin Abu Mul Khalik, when he had these verses, he said, Kada qanbi ay yadir, my heart was about to fly out. And he said, that was the first time he mad entered my heart. Are we all together? So as Muslims, when we study our religion, so in that class when I was, I, I wasn't part of the class, but I was an to just kept out, you could, university could just sit down if you want to, me, to they wouldn't know you, you were a student in the class or not. So I would just start. But I could see so many Muslims who were there and actually taking notes and studying the Atit theology from a non-Muslim. And as we, I can't put my hand up and correct him in the class because I'm not a student in the class. So I'm quiet. But he's doing basic mistakes on the biography of any Malik. Are we all together? Does that make sense? And whether the hadith books, that's the first hadith book to ever be written and all of that. So the point I'm saying is that Muslims shouldn't really you know, give any time to study the deep. So Umar radiallahu when he saw this Quran, he said, Ma ahsan hadha al-kalam wa akraba. Allahi beautiful and great this speech is. He said, Ma yabbali ni man yaqulu hadha al-kalam man yu'bada ba'ahu dhayl. Allahu akbar. He said, the one that says this speech should not be worshipped other than him. And no one should worship anyone other than him. The one who is saying these words. Then he said, I want to go to the Prophet. When Khabab had, okay, it's good. Khabab's hiding still. But he had everything, Umar Allah reading, he just came out. And he hugged Umar radiallahu anhu. And then he said, فَإِنِّي وَاللَّهِ لَأَرْجُوا أَنْ يَكُونَ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ قَدْ خَصَّكَ بِدَعْوَةِ نَبِيهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Do you know what I think, Umar? The dua of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم hit you. I used to hear him, he said, Allah, make dua for your Umar. And he told him the dua. Umar then said to him, Dunuli ya Khabbab ala Muhammadin. Go and show me the Prophet. I want to go to him and I want to embrace Islam. He said, Come, I'll take you to him. He took the Prophet, he took Umar to the Prophet, Dar al Arqam, Ibn Abi al Arqam, and there was a good number of Sahabas with him. Umar, of course, he still got the sword on him. He's got his sword, everything he's Lock and loaded. He covered his face, then he went to the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knocked the door. When he knocked the door, one of the companions stood up and he looked inside the door to look who it is. Because Umar had a unique way of knocking the door, very heavy. So he frightens anybody. So he came running and he just looked at the door and they saw a man who is, he's got sword on him. They looked under, looked up at him. It is Roma, the one and only. And he's Baruf, he's known in Mecca and Mecca. So then they said, Ya Rasulullah, our messenger of Allah, Hada Umar ibn Khattab. Umar has come with his sword and his face is covered. Ha. The people started to become scared. How does this turn up? And they said, man, like, why are you guys scared of They said, do you know who we, do you know who we just said is standing at the door? He said, Umar Khattab. He said, If the Hamdan Ahud Bad, open that door for him. There's no. If he wants good, we will embrace him. We'll all hug him and take him as a brother. If he doesn't want good, I promise you, I will kill him with the sword he's wearing. Not my sword, he's one. I'll take it from him and I'll slice his neck. The Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he said, Eat it Let him in it. They opened the door for him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to him directly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came towards him. When the Prophet came to him, some of the narrations mentioned, the Prophet grabbed all of his clock around himself and he walked towards Umar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then grabbed Umar from the two sides of his shoulder and he squeezed him. 
like it was a moment he wanted so much. And the narration mentions, فَمَا تَمَالَكَ عُمَرِ Umar could not hold himself standing حَتَّى وَقَعَ عَلَى رُبَّتِهِ He fell on the ground with his knees. The Prophet then said to him, مَا جَاءَ بِكَ يَبْنَ الْفَطَّابِ Umar, why are you here for? He said to him, the Prophet said, for Allah, ma ara an tintay hatta yuzin Allah bika qari'ata. I do not see an tintay that this ends until Allah tabarak wa ta'ala sends a big news. Something big is going to happen from this. Either you're going to you come here to cause a problem, that's going to be big news, or you are going to embrace Islam and this is going to be a big shock for people of Makkah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, jitunu umina bika bilahi. I came to believe in Allah and Rasuli and His Messenger. That which they came with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I shadu Allah ilaha in Allah wa hadahu la sharika lak. Wa shadu Allah Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. The Prophet then said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet was very happy with Umar radiallahu and embraced Islam. The Sahabas all did their takbir when they had. And that was the course of the story of Mecca and the Sahabas changed. Yani Umar changed a lot. As you know, brothers and sisters, inshallah we're going to touch on that and more. In Mecca, all the other Sahabas, when they wanted to do the Hijrah to Medina, they hid, they took another route. There was nobody who came and left everyone knowing that he was leaving, except Umar. Umar waited for the day when Quraysh was sitting in their assembly when they were the largest in Napa. Daytime, broad daylight, they came to the gathering, stood in the midst of them with his horse ready, with his camel, his camel ready, and his belongings on his shoulders. And he said, Quraysh, um, I'm leaving. I'm going to Medina. Um, and uh, the route I'm going to take is that road. I'm not going to go around and everything. I'm going straight. Anyone who wants to meet me, you can follow me. I promise you, your wife will lose her husband. And the mother's going to lose her son. Anyone who wants to be an orphan, you know, make his children orphan? Come, let's go. Farah Quraysh, Abu Jahl, and Uthman al-Rabi, Ayra the Sufyan, all of them. The grand teacher was bound since Omar just let it go. Even when he embraced Islam, the next morning he went and he told everybody. Omar didn't hide it, he said. He didn't feel like he wanted to hide this big thing that he had. Radhi Allah Taala and Anil. Another. Yani, the riwayah mentions the khabar of the Islam of Umar radiallahu anhu. Yani, other narrations. Uh, yani, Ibn Sa'ad and Ahmed and others narrated. All of those narrations are very weak. There's no point mentioning it. But I'm going to conclude with the news how it reached Medi uh, Mecca, Umar's Islam, inshallah. I'm going to conclude with that, inshallah. Ibn Hibban narrated in his Sahih and Ahmed in his. Fala'i no sahaba, authentic chain that Abdullah ibn Umar he said, Lamba aslama abi Umar, when my father embraced Islam, Lam ta'alab Quraysh bi Islami, Quraysh did not know about his Islam. Faqana, ayyu Quraysh al qulu lil hadithi. No one knew that Umar took Islam. So what he did was, Umar radiallahu anhu said, Who is the person who can get a message the fastest around Mecca? I want to know for who is BBC. Get the message around from one point to one point. They said to him, Jabir ibn Ma'bar al Jubahi. He can get the story from one point to another point the fastest. In the morning, he went to him. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, وَغَدَوْتُ أَتْبَعُ أَثَرَ أُنظُرُ فَأَنظُرُ مَا يَفْعَلُوا I was that time, a young kid, I wanted to see what my father was going to do. I followed him up and I... And my father came to him and he said to him, Aba Do you not know, Ya Jameel, Anni Qad Aslamta? 
you don't know Jamil I embraced Islam when they have to see Deen Muhammad and then I took the religion of Nabi Muhammad قال فوالله ما رجعوا حتى قام يجلب أريدا وأتبعه عمر واتبعت أبي حتى إذا قام على باب المسجد صرخ بأعلى صوتي عمر had didn't even need Jameel he's a man who can't hold information so he, uh, he gets points the news and the rumors quickly around in Mecca so he stood at the door and he screamed and he said to the people يا بعشر قريش in a very loud voice the narration mentioned وَهُمْ فِي أَدْيَتِهِمْ They were sitting in their assembly at that time around the Kaaba أَلَا إِلَّا عُمَرَ بْنَ الْخَطَّابِ قَدْ صَبَعَ Umar has deviated from the religion of his forefathers فَقَالَ عُمَرُ مِنْ خَنْفِ كَذَبَ وَلَكِبْنِ قَدْ أَسْلَمْتُ أَشَنُوا أَنَّا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ He's lying مَا سَبَعْتُمْ Sabah is the word that they used to use for the Muslims that embraced Islam He said, no, I didn't I embraced Islam I what? They were trying to say, but Sabai Ali deviated. No, no, I didn't deviate it. I actually went to guidance. And I have become a Muslim and I bear witness that Allah is the only one who's worthy of worship except. I, I bear witness that there's none worthy of worship except Allah, that Muhammad is his messenger and his slave. So some of the narration mentioned, Fatharu ilayhi, they all rushed at Umar. Faba bariha yuqatilu wa yuqatilu no hatta qabati shavsa ala rumsi. Each person was trying to attack Umar. Umar was fighting back against them all. They charged at him. When they found out he embraced Islam. Until the sun came out. It was in the morning from Fajr. Until the sun came out. They were fighting. As they were like this. And an old man from Quraysh was wearing a... He was wearing a, a garment. He came to them. حَتَّى وَقَفَ عَلِيهِمْ فَقَالَ He said, Masha, what's your affairs? Why are you guys like this? Why are you fighting for? They said, you know, he, Umar did, he left the religion of his forefathers. He said, Ba, رَجُلٌ اِخْتَارَ لِنَفْسِي أَفْرًا فَمَادَ تُنِيد This man chose something for himself. Why are you forcing for an Egypt? And then he said to them, Ba, تُنِيد, who do you guys want? بَنِي عَلِي بْنِ كَعْبِ الْمُسْلِمُونَ لَكُمْ صَاحِبَهُ هَكَدَا Do you think Again, tribalism, that his people, the people that Umar was from, are going to surrender him to you like that, then you can do what you want with him. And that's what they left Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, he then said, فقلت لي أبي, I said to my dad after that, بعد أن هاجر إلى المدينة when he migrated to مدينة, يا أبتي, my father, من الرجل الذي زجر القوم عنك بمكة يوم أسلمت? Who was that man? who stopped the people from you, from harming you that day. And then, when they wanted to kill you, he said that is an Aas ibn Wa'in. Aas ibn Wa'in is the father of who? Abu ibn Aas is father. Sabi, he's the one who stopped the people. Um, ibn Hishab, he mentions, حدثني بعض أهل العلم عن ابن عمر أنه قال لعمر يا أبتي من الرجل الذي زجر القوم عنك يوم أسلمت وهم يقاتلونك جزاه الله خيرا قال يا بني ذاك العاص بوائن ذا جزاه الله خيرا ابن عمر he said to his father may Allah reward good for the bad who stopped the people from harming you who was he? And then Umar رضي الله عنه, he said, May Allah not reward him with good. He was Al-Asib Al-Wahid, Al-Sahmi. So that day when Umar رضي الله عنه, he embraced Islam, Abdullah ibn Masrud, he said, كان إسلام عمر فتحا. Umar was Islam, was an opening. وهجرته نصرا, when he migrated to Medina with us, it was victory. وإمارته رحمة. And his leadership for us was a mercy. والله ما استطعنا أن نصلي حول البيت ظاهرين حتى أسلم عمر. We could never go and pray around the masjid, the Kaaba, as we wanted until the day Umar embraced Islam. Half of the Muhaddi said in his kitab and Isabah fi tabiyiz al-Sahaba, ثم أسلم عمر فكان إسلامه فتحا على المسلمين وفرجا لهم من الضيق. The hardship, the distress and the discomfort that the Muslims were going through. Umar is Islam 
helped. Some of the scholars of Tafsir, they mentioned that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said regarding Umar ibn al-Khattab and Abi Jahl, the statement of Allah, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُوا فِي الظُّرْبَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجِ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ This ayah, some of the scholars of tafsir, they said it came down regarding Umar al-Khattab and who? Abu Jahl. وَلِذَلِكَ حَافَظُ بْنُ حَجَّ عَافَظُ بْنُ كَثِيرٍ He says, وَالصَّحِيحُ عَنَّ الْآيَةَ تَعَابَّةً That which is correct is that the verse is not on the two or two of them, but it's a general verse. يَدْخُلُ فِيهَا كُلُّ مُؤْمِنٍ وَكَافِرٍ Sa'id ibn Musayyab, okay, and Sa'id ibn Jubayr, رَحِمَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى They said, this is the ayah that came down regarding Umar. يَا أَيُّ النَّبِيُّ حَرَّضِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى الْقِتَالِ إِيَّكُمْ مِنْكُمْ عِشُرُونَ صَابِرُونَ يَغْلِبُوا مِئَتَيْنِ وَإِيَّكُمْ مِنْكُمْ مِئَةٌ يَغْلِبُوا أَنْفًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَإِيَّكُمْ مِنْكُمْ مِئَةٌ يَغْلِبُوا أَلْفًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ And then after that, the ayat of tahfif came down and آنَ خَفَّفَ اللَّهُ عَاكُمْ وَعَلِمَ أَنَّ فِيكُمْ ضَعْفَ That came down. Sa'id ibn Musayyab and Sa'id ibn Jubayr, both of them, they said, إِنَّ هَذِي الْآيَةَ نَزَلَتْ حِينَ أَسْلَمَ عُمَرُ الْخَطَّابِ This ayah came down when Umar embraced Islam. وَكَمُلَ بِهِ الْأَرْبَعُونَ And the 40 became complete. And of course, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, did not agree with Sa'id ibn Musayyab ولا Sa'id ibn Jubayr on this tafsir of the ayah because he said this ayah is an ayah of Madinia. It came down in Medina. And Umar, as we know, he took Islam where? In Mecca, before he migrated to Medina. Wallahu a'lam. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to stop there, bi'idhi lahi al-kareem. Next uh, lesson, inshallah ta'ala, in the seerah, we're going to be talking about Iqara'at Quraysh in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything I've said that was wrong but incorrect is from me as shaytan and the line of message are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ad. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك